Hey everybody, uh, Billy Jim City Welding, back at it. Another Sunday fun day, working on the 6 foe, doing some uh, suspension work today. Trying out my new phone. I, I don't know if anyone could tell from the last video, it kept going like in and out, kind of grainy, and uh, just pretty kind of you know poor quality. Uh, I think it's probably because I ruined a damn thing from welding and all the other things I do. Uh, when I'm at work and stuff and I have my phone in my pocket, it's just, it's hard on it. Um, but yeah, so I'm trying out my new phone. It's got this cinematic feature. It's pretty rad. So I know production quality is kind of lacking on the channel, but it's just me. Just one guy in his garage. So today I'm working on uh, building some lower control arms. And... I'm not really going to do a step-by-step -step tutorial, probably be a lot of time lapses um, just because I get to rambling on and I need to cut that stuff out and just keep on working. I know I'm, it's, I have to remind myself that not everybody wants to see every intricate little detail of what I'm doing. Uh, so I'm going to get the camera flipped around here and show you what I'm working on. Okay, so guys with Impalas, you've seen these before, stock lower control arms. Um, nothing wrong with a stock lower control arm as far as like modifying these and, and using these. A lot of guys, uh, a lot of guys do that and that's okay. Um, just, it wasn't really the look I was going for. Um, so went and picked up the material, uh, two by three box, CCE power balls. I got a two, two inch piece of pipe there for the sleeves. And then I got a piece of pipe to cut for the uh, ends. And then I've already got one tacked up and it needs to be welded still, but I wanted to keep it, you know, in this state so that when I go to make the second one that matches it, I can make sure that everything, that everything, here we go, there we go. Make sure everything comes out perfectly. Um, these sleeves, do you have to do that? No, you do not. Uh, that's just a choice that I've made. And, you know, making these on my own, if, if I find out the sleeves don't work or uh, for whatever reason, I, you know, I could always remake them. But that's the route I'm gonna take. And uh, I have the bushings already too. They're just, uh, I'm making these for like a stock uh, 58 to 64 uh, rear trailing arm bushing, the larger of the two. So, um, I, a friend of mine helped me uh, figure this kind of stuff out and you know lent me some pointers on what to do so that's the plan today get the second one made and then uh, try to get it kind of sort of mocked up over there on the frame and see how everything's gonna gonna line up so I guess what what I'll do now is I'll get you set up on time lapse flip everything around and I'm um, just gonna go at it and probably break in from time to time and um, just talk about some things. So hang tight, be back soon. guys so what I've done is I've tried to show that if you don't already obviously have one of these made you can take the stock one and uh, use it as your template um, now the measurements that I'm using may not be for everybody this is just what works for me I mean it all should be pretty standard but to be honest with you I mean every little car every car is different every frame is different excuse me um, I just tried to find center line in the spring pocket where the stock uh, spring, where the stock spring would sit. So I just went off of that measurement and putting my power ball dead, you know, dead center of where this would be, um, kind of give me my layout. 
and then of course uh, draw. I drew the. Uh, you saw me use the soapstone to draw the template out for the uh, bushing sleeve. Um, again, you know, I don't know if this is standard practice. This is just how I'm doing it, how I'm learning to do it on my own. I've never made these before. Um, so, you know, fingers crossed, everything's gonna be just fine and line up fine. Uh, yes, you did see me use that as a template, but I needed something that was exactly two inches. And yeah, I could have bought a hole saw to do these, but the best hole saw that I've ever seen in my whole entire life is that right there. And that's the God's honest truth. I, I'll probably never buy another hole saw again. Um, so, yep, that's where I'm at. Just wanted to stop and explain everything and I'm gonna keep moving on. So hang tight. Okay, so there you have it. Got her pretty much dialed in perfectly. Uh, some of you may be asking, when the hell did he weld that if he's gonna be cutting it out? Uh, the idea was to weld the top, that way it didn't have any movement when I welded the sides. I wanted it to you know, stay in place the best I could get it. So even though that'll be cut out, it's uh, in my eyes it's necessary. Um, but yeah, to each his own. So now I'm going to uh, mark out for the rear uh, bushing, the power ball, and then I'll come back and plasma everything out and uh, get some assembly going. So hang tight. That is a very rough, you know, take on how to do these. Again, this isn't uh, the gospel. You know, it's one of my favorite sayings. Um, but this is just how I did it. And, you know, I got them as close as I possibly can. Uh, they're pretty true as far as, you know, from, from one to the other. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, it's an adjustable suspension. You know what I mean? So... Things are gonna change, things are gonna move, uh, but I gotta miss, sorry. I'm, it's gonna take me a minute to get used to this uh, autofocus. There we go, cinematic thing. So I'm gonna take, uh, take some time and grind them up, get them nice and clean, uh, cut the sleeves, and then uh, start tacking everything together. So, see you soon. Got to talk about this earlier so this is actually what i'm cutting out sorry hopefully there we go that's about the size of the wedge that i'm taking out um i don't know what degree that is i don't have a protractor here at home it's it's at work in the welding stuff um but you know pretty self-explanatory just try to match your factory uh lower control arms if you have one um that's that's really the best method to get this perfect and square um, so now what I'm gonna work on is I've got, I've got this piece of pipe um, let me, sorry let me flip you around yes. so I've got this piece of pipe um, it's quarter inch wall so I want to try and replace uh, you know for these end caps that you see 
right there. I want to use quarter inch. Um, I have 316s here at home, and we're you know we're splitting hairs at that point. Uh, but I've got this piece of pipe. It's available. I'm just going to go ahead and use it. So I'm going to take my marking gauge, which is ancient, but works great, and I'm going to just mark out two two-inch wide pieces because these are these are two by three dimensional. Um, so I'll just cut out those and uh, nothing really exciting there. So I'll bring you back when I get them all tacked up and ready to rock. Hey guys, sorry. I <laughs> welded these end caps on and realized that I didn't have, uh, I wasn't recording anything. So sorry about that. Just got the end cap there. And of course the end cap there. Um, you guys hear, if you guys watch Alex and his channel, Papos, he's always talking about like, you know, he's got his, his finished welds and then his blending welds. Um, so that's kind of built up pretty high. That way I can come back and uh, there, sorry, that's a better representation. Everything's kind of built up so I can come back and grind all that smooth and, and mold everything out. Uh, but you get the idea. So now I will get you set up and I'm going to cut uh, the sleeves out of that for the bushings and uh, get them all tacked in there. So hang tight. there ladies and gentlemen there you have it two lower rear control arms uh, sleeve bushings sleeve pipe tack, uh, tacked in place ready for the bushings to press in uh, power balls I have not tacked those in yet I will tack them uh, not going to fully weld the power balls just yet uh, for one I want to make sure that when I get the rear end ready um, I can get everything lined up make sure everything's true, make sure everything's square. But from what I'm seeing, I, I think I got a home run. So not too difficult of a project, a uh, little time consuming, just a little bit of math, nothing serious. Um, is this something that someone at home could try? Absolutely, uh, just takes patience and um, trial and error. You know, you're gonna mess up a little bit, but that's okay, that's part of it. Let's see, so what I can try to do, if I can hold the, maybe set the phone up, is I'll try and put one of these close to the frame and show you, you know, what I'm looking at and how it's gonna work. Um, and then from there, it's just fully welding them solid. So not much left to go on them. So let's, um, let me see if I can get one of these kind of sort of mocked up on the frame and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So hang tight. All right, let me go grab the, uh, Lower control arm, I got you all set up. I know it's a terrible angle, but it's the best I got right now. But this is just kind of show you what I'm looking at. So this be sort of like this. Now the, this particular frame has two uh, bolt holes. I believe one is for the wagon. And then one is for the coupe and four door, but I'm not really sure about that. Um, so, you get the idea. You know what I mean? Everything looks like it's gonna line up just right from what I'm seeing. Um, not bad for my first time, I feel like. Uh, let's see. There's one other thing I forgot to mention. I'll come get the I'll come get the camera and I'll show you. I mean it's not a super big deal. I mean some people might like lose their minds if it's not perfectly, you know, symmetrical and, and all that, which is great, you know. Um, is dessert fittings or grease fittings. So I have those angled 
towards the inside of the axle. So they're not gonna be showing on the outside. You won't be able to see them um, at a glance from the side. So yeah, just, I don't know, a little detail. It's something that I think looks cool. Um, man, this, this cinematic thing is, man, it's crazy. But anyways, yep, Zerg fittings on the inside. Every time I do that, I'll stop doing that. Uh, so that's pretty much gonna cover it for lower control arm uh, on a 58 to 64 Impala. Have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, I'm gonna do a couple things here off camera and then I'll get this video's uh, speak on a topic and uh, we'll have a little talk about that. Be right back. Okay, before we get to that speak on a topic, I decided to just go ahead and kind of throw it together and mock up a little bit to show everybody at home what's going on. I don't have my uh, coilover cup just yet, but this kind of gives you an idea of what I'm talking about. Um, I'm gonna have to go back and look at my earlier videos. I can't remember if this was the top or the bottom. Uh, looking at the bracket where the bolt was for, you know, sitting there for 60 years, it's, it appears as though it was on the top, but I can't remember. But either, either way, it doesn't really matter. This just gives you an idea. Um, of course, the cylinder won't be out that much because I don't have my cup, uh, reverse cup on there. Pull over cup, sorry. But you get the idea. Everything looks like it's gonna be just fine. So just wanted to throw that out there. So let's get to the speak on it. All right, so here we are. Uh, this video, Speak on a Topic, is uh, one that I'm sure if you pay any attention to social media or, uh, you know, I don't care what you're on the internet. If you're into low riding, chances are you've heard of it by now, so it's kind of old news. But for me, it's kind of fresh in my mind because um, I went to um, a Thanksgiving uh, get together, uh, dinner, club meeting, however you want to look at it, with a uh, the club I'm prospecting for, Dedication Car Club, and the topic came up from a, a few guys I was surprised, was, uh, you know, the recent announcement of uh, Joe Ray leaving Lowrider Magazine and starting his um, own brand, I guess you could call it a brand, that's what it is at this point, uh, Original Lowrider, which is really rad, you know? Um, there's a, there was an announcement for the Chicago show that's coming up, which, you know, we, I'm in Dayton, Ohio, so I'm not too far away from Chicago. You know, it's reasonable driving distance, and I'm looking forward to going to the show. It's uh, Joe Ray's um, show with, um, I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly, it's Kyle Ritas. I believe he's one of the guys behind getting this together. Um, with Joe leaving Lowrider, I you know I can only speculate what's going what went on behind the scenes with like Motor Trend and Lowrider Magazine. Um, so yeah, I don't really have anything concrete on that, but I can tell you that obviously Lowrider Magazine being out of print, I mean when that announcement was made, that was a huge blow to all of us because I my I had Lowrider Magazine back to probably '93 or '94 that I bought on my own when they were still in the newsstands. And some I bought over the years that are older just for collectibles. Um, but I mean, I cherish those things. And Lowrider Magazine, it's, yeah, everything's at your your fingertips now with your phones and computers. But I mean, I just, you know, I miss the magazine. Um, and there's some publications out there doing magazines now and I support them when I, when I can find an issue. Um, but back to Joe Ray doing his thing, you know, I don't, the days of Alberta Low, uh, Magazine, Alberta Lopez, sorry, Magazine, and um, when it changed to Prime Media, and I can't remember if it changed between that and Motor Trend, but the end game was Motor Trend, and the magazine went away, and what an unfortunate event. So Joe Ray, you know, he's going out on his own, um, started this uh, original lowrider and I'm super excited about it. He's announced a, a three or four shows, I think at this point. Um, and I'm not, it's not that I'm team 
like a teen lowrider or team original lowrider. I'm for low riding. I'm for the culture. I'm for the people. Um, you know, the cars, obviously. Uh, I love all of it. And, you know, Lowrider Magazine is going off their Lowrider Unity Tour for 2023, which there's been a lot of rumblings about that, you know, about the unity, quote unquote, unity between the two. And, you know, at the end of the day, I, I feel like. You know, I don't know Joe personally. Um, I'm looking forward to meeting him at the Chicago show. He's supposed to be there, so that's going to be exciting. But I hope that whatever bad blood they have between them, they can get that over with and just move on and, you know, keep it about the family, keep it about the sport, keep it about the hobby, the lifestyle, the culture, everything that goes along with it. And I'm sure I'm not the only one that feels that way. If Lowrider Magazine would do a tour stop within, let's call it six hours driving distance of me, I'd be there. I would be there in a moment, you know, in a heartbeat, but they're not doing that. Um, we used to have the Indy Lowrider tour stop back in the 90s and 2000s, and that was awesome. That was great. Um, but they, you know, it's the brand, and unfortunately, I, I feel like whoever's pulling the purse strings at Motor Trend is not doing much for lowriders so Joe's taking a leap of faith and you know he's got some really you know big name people behind him he's got a uh, Chinaman crazy cutting um, you know those of you that know Chinaman know you know he was a lowrider role model as as was Joe Ray that's a pretty big deal you know and are those guys you know someone to look up to in the sport and hobby sure um, iconic cars iconic car builders um, definitely movers and shakers in the, in the hobby. So, you know, and then Kyle, you know, with his, uh, I believe he's rollers. Uh, forgive me, Kyle, if you see this and you're not, I'm, I apologize, but I feel, I think you're uh, rollers only. So, you know, um, that's a big deal. That's a huge deal in the Midwest. They, they got a pretty big presence here in the Midwest. Uh, so, you know, and that's the other thing that doesn't really get talked about much is like with the exposure of the magazine, the original Lowrider magazine, um, you know, that brought indie to the masses. That brought like, uh, there was a uh, Nobi Nationals in Georgia that got featured usually in the magazines. Um, there was Southern Showdown, which was hosted by Cool Cars forever, which was a great show in Kentucky, you know, and it showed the rest of the United States and the rest of the world that low riding was just as popular here in the Midwest as it was anywhere else. And even though that went away for a while, it's it's come back like I've never seen it. And I've talked, you know, I've talked on this before with guys my age who were doing it back then have re you know, they found it again, they fell in love with it again, or their you know, their kids are older and you know, life's changing. So they're getting back into it and just like myself and you know, seeing those shows, you know, the talk of getting together, hap you know, the things that are happening, um, that's awesome. So, you know, I'm not, like I said, I'm not team lowrider, I'm not team original lowrider, I'm just for low riding. So I wish both, you know, a lot of success. I wish Joe Ray a lot of success and everybody that's behind him and backing him uh, when it comes to that stuff. So if you're in the Midwest, Keep a lookout on like Facebook or Instagram. Joe Ray, you know, he's on there. Uh, Chicago, the Chicago show, that's gonna be a big one. And I'm really looking forward to it. Um, so, and then the last uh, thing I wanted to touch upon was the last video of, of finishing up this guy here. I had a lot of comments from a lot of people. I uh, really appreciate it. You know, those of you who reached out to me and said, you know, thanks for the help and, and giving me the um, knowledge and know-how to, to tackle that for their, you know, on their own. And so, thank you. I appreciate all of you. That means a lot. So, like, share, subscribe, please. Uh, I passed 800 subscribers, which I never thought that would happen. So, we're well on our way. Um, channel's not super big or popular, but it's gaining some traction with some people, and I, I appreciate that a lot. So. Uh, like, share, subscribe. Feel free to ask any questions. You know, I'll answer them as best as I can, or I'll try to get back to you. And uh, 
those of you who helped me out and have shared with me your knowledge, I appreciate you so much. It means the world to me. So thank you, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Hopefully, uh, let's see, I, I pretty much got the lowers where I want them, so now I think I'm gonna start on the upper arms. That's, I'd like to get those knocked out. So that should be next, coming up soon, hopefully. So take care, we'll see everybody. Peace.